Hi Booktube, Lynette here and in this video I am going to be doing the first part of my April wrap up. Yes, that's right, I've read a lot of books again this month so I have to split my wrap up into two parts and I'm going to talk to you about the first seven books uh, in this video and <clears throat> without further ado let's get into it. So the first book that I finished was the In Death Read Along pick and that was Portrait in Death by J.D. Robb. Again, I've talked about these books so many times that I probably don't really need to go very much into them. Um, it's about Eve Dallas, who is a New York homicide detective set in the late 2050s. And she has to solve uh, a series of crimes, again, a series of murders in this book. Again, there's the murder that's got to be solved, in which I really didn't know who the killer was this month. It really did stump me. I couldn't pick it up at all. And um, and then we've all got the interpersonal relationships that she's developing as well. So there's the relationship with her husband, Rourke, who has some issues of his own to resolve. He finds some things out about his history that he didn't know and family that he didn't know. And it all goes from there and which leads to some great development in their relationship and, and realisation of how people can support each other for Eve. It's great growth for her as a person as well. Um, so again, really enjoyed it. I think these days I'm not reading these books so much for the crime, although they are very good. I'm probably more reading them for the interpersonal relationships. Um, but yes, I'm addicted to reading them and I'm carrying on with the reading them one a month. So from there, I decided to move into reading the spins from the wheel of tbr for the month and the first one of those was not quite terran by celia kyle writing as erin tate i had a mixed bag with my reading this month in terms of enjoyment and this didn't quite live up to what i wanted it to um it's an alien based romance um i don't think it's set on earth i think it's set on some kind of space station type thing um, and yes, our main characters are all alien. I had some issues um, with this book, uh, with some of the things that happened. Um, so yes, wasn't the best start to go into after Portrait in Death, I must admit. Um, but all I could do was hope that it improved. So in this book, we're following um, Rebecca, who is Terran born. She has a job on the space station where she has to... Um, make sure that anybody coming onto the station is sanctioned and is allowed to be there and obviously report and arrest anybody who isn't supposed to be there. Her love interest is Karu, who is an unsanctioned alien and he is smuggled into her apartment by another alien who lives on the space station. And she's asked if she could help Karu um, because he's uh, got some things that he's trying to figure out for his home world. There are some... Um, enemies that he has to defeat and Karu unfortunately is seen leaving her apartment or at least um, the other alien who smuggled him in is also seen. This led to the problematic part of this story for me um, because the next day everyone seemed to think that because Rebecca had allowed a man into her apartment that she was fair game for anything and you had to read through multiple rape attempts on her uh, by individuals and by groups of male aliens and it I didn't enjoy it and it wasn't well done and it wasn't sensitively done and I'm sorry but I, I just even if you're trying to show how races other races are different um, from the main race that you're trying to portray I'm sorry, how, how is multiple different men from multiple different races attempting to rape a woman because she interacted with another male from another species? How, how, is, how is that acceptable? Um, it's, not, it's not acceptable anyway in terms of the actual actions, but how the author felt that this was acceptable to write and to show and to give a demonstration of how races are different, I don't get it and I didn't enjoy it. And 
although it didn't make me put because it was only a short period of the book so it didn't make me put it down the book was only a couple of hundred pages anyway um and I wanted to see what happened between them because by this point I had some suspicions about Rebecca herself and and her um her own heritage um so I did want to get into that and explore that a bit more so I did keep going with it um and thankfully that was the worst of it in the book um it did kind of improve a little bit there uh but because of the problematic um issues uh I couldn't give it a very high rating and I, sadly I probably wouldn't even recommend it either. So I thought I'd try again and I moved on to the second spin for the month and that was Breathless by Eve Carter. Um, again, I don't know what to say. Um, it wasn't really a great book. I didn't enjoy it. Um, there is trigger warning for drugs and sex and violence. Um, and to me, it felt like it was written by um, a mid to late teen with a romanticised view of how a bad boy who does uh, drugs and drinks a lot and fights a lot uh, can be turned around and made into a good boy. And it, it was terrible. Um, I really didn't enjoy it. I don't know why I pushed I think I pushed through and finished it because I got to the point where by the time I realised it, I was like... I'm really not enjoying this. I think I was nearly three quarters of the way through and I thought I just might as well finish it just to get it done. Um, Jesse is a motocross rider and he has some problems and he moves to California for the summer while he's healing from an injury and there he meets Nikki. And like I say, it was just felt very juvenile in tone in the writing style. Um, and it, it that just didn't work for me at all. Um, so... Yes, it's not one that I particularly enjoyed and although it's the first in a series, it's a series that I definitely will not be continuing. Um, and I was a little bit sad um, because I kind of had, I, I like the premise, you know, motocross isn't a sport that you come across very often in sports romance. So I was really looking forward to having maybe a different sport to read about, um, but there wasn't any of that in there at all. So, yes, um another series dnf for me so i still had high hopes for romance this month and i decided to move on to the third spin for the month because they were all romance and i got a book one of the shadow assassin series which is royal obsession by cindy freiberg i like the premise of this one um again it's not earth-based uh so it is a different completely different races of beings and again set space so multiple worlds in space um basically uh it's time for varick who is one of the higher ups in the shadow assassins guild to mate and breed and bring more uh, males into the shadow assassins world and he goes on a hunting party and he's also trying to overthrow the current leaders of the shadow assassins and to do this he needs a powerful mate and he decides to go after the daughters of the current queen um, of the other realm that they go to and he successfully kidnaps them um, the younger of the two princesses is the one who takes his interest and while i enjoyed the premise again the execution now the execution of the majority of the story was really good and i really enjoyed it but again trigger warning for attempted rape i again i just I, if you're going to do it you need to do it well um and you need to get people to read it and tell you whether you've done it well because this was not done well um yes it didn't happen yes the main protagonist Varric realized that obviously what he was doing was wrong and he did stop and he didn't actually force uh, Echo to have sex with him um but <laughs> this was more about Stockholm Syndrome than it was a romance um it's probably the best way to describe it I didn't believe in Echo and Varric as a couple at all uh, because Echo just switched on her feelings for Varric just like that. Now, 
I've read a lot of Instalove. I've read a heck of a lot of Instalove. In the last 10 years, I've read over 800 romance novels. But this was just, it was Stockholm Syndrome. It wasn't Instalove. And for that reason, um, I didn't enjoy it. Now, I carried on reading it and did finish it because I liked the rest of the story and I liked the politics and I liked the intrigue side of it. But the romance, I can't get on board with. At the moment, it's not a series DNF, but I'm not 100% certain. I haven't invested in the next book in the series, but it is a series that I'm going to keep on my radar and that maybe at some point in the future I might dip my toe in with the second book and see how I go with that one. Because I'd like to know more about the world. I'd like to know more about the politics and how certain elements are, are, are um, dealt with and defeated. So I may continue later on. But no um if you're an experienced romance reader you can probably work through the problematic issues um if you're not an experienced romance reader i wouldn't recommend it because this will probably put you off now the keen-eyed among you might be able to spot what the next three books are before i put them up um but i'm going to talk about them together because i went on a bit of a series binge i decided that i it was the end of the first week of April. I got through the first four books really, really quickly. Um, and I felt it was too soon because the um, book club chat uh, was for the end of, very, very end of April, beginning of May. Um, I felt it was too soon in the month to read the book club pick. So I decided to try and catch up on a series that I've been reading um, and make a bit of headway into that and like I say if you are keen-eyed you might be able to tell already but it is the final three books in the Rain Wild Chronicles by uh, Robin Hobb. So book two, um, I read book one which is here, uh, Dragon Keeper, I read that last year um, so I decided to carry on with the entire series so book two is Dragon Haven. Book three is City of Dragons and book four is Blood of Dragons. Um, I'm just going to hold up Blood of Dragons um, rather than try and hold up all three. Uh, they're a bit weighty to try and hold together. Um, but I'm really glad that I picked this up. Um, I was kind of in the mood for fantasy anyway after having read three um, romances, two of which were set on another world and another one that was set in the future. So kind of the fantasy elements were what um, drew me in, I think. The entire Rainwild Chronicle series, which these three books belong to, is set in the realm of the Elderlings and the overall series here, which I actually have all of them. Um, I actually have a confession to make. I do have all of them. If you've seen my May TBR, then you know that I actually hauled some Tolkien books. Um, at the same time as I bought the Tolkien books, I bought The Piebald Prince and The Wilful Princess, and I've got that the wrong way round. I do apologise. Um, I haven't read this one yet, um, but I am going to be reading it fairly soon, probably before I start the final series, um, because this actually goes with the Tawny Man trilogy rather than any of the other series. Uh, so yes, so the Rainwell Chronicles is actually a direct follow-on from uh, the series here, which is the um, Live Ship Traders series. We this time we are set um, in the Rainwilds, and we've moved on five years from the end of the Live Ship Traders series, and. I really enjoyed it. Uh, basically, some dragons have been born and they aren't very well and the Rainwild's um, inhabitants want rid of them. So they decide that with a little bit of um, coercion from the dragons themselves to send them upriver to a place called Kelsingra. Now, nobody knows if Kelsingra actually exists. Um, the dragons, it's part of their ancestral memory memories and they decide to go and hunt for it themselves because if it is there is the possibility that they will learn to become full dragons while they're there um so these three books um in dragon haven they've actually set off for that and in dragon haven uh city of dragons and blood of dragons um it's the continuation of that story but we also bring in some characters from the live ship traders trilogy 
uh, because they are needed to interact with the dragons themselves. I really enjoyed it. Um, I love Robin Hobb's writing. I love every, I've loved everything I've read of hers that she's written. Now, I hadn't actually finished this series the first time it came out. I got as far as Dragon Haven. Um, I didn't read past that because I got into a bit of a slump and these weren't books I wanted to read on my Kindle. Um, so I absolutely adored uh, the Farseer trilogy, Liveship trilogy and Tawny Man trilogy, which are the first nine books here. Um, and like I say, I read the first two as they were released in this series and slumped and never went back to it until now. Um, it was a bit of a letdown. Blood of Dragons is the final book and it felt a bit rushed towards the end. Now, I would recommend you read it. I don't know how, if um, any of what's happened um, in this one fit in to the kind of the series that's based around Fitz and the Fall. So um, Farseer trilogy, Tawny Man trilogy, and then right at the end, um, Fitz and the Fall trilogy. I know the dragons came into it a little bit in Tawny Man, um, but I'm glad I finished it so that I'll know because there were little flashes back to, there was one point where I sat and went, oh, that's so-and-so. And it, it does relate back to the other series. And if you know, you know, um, I'm trying not to give away any spoilers, but I, I do thoroughly love uh, Robin Hobbs writing. Um, I did decide though um, that I wouldn't carry on after this book. Um, I've been told, Tawny Man broke me. I spent the last half of Fool's Fate in tears. I have been told that if I was that badly affected by Fool's Fate, that the Fits and the Fool series is gonna is gonna definitely break me. Um, so I decided not to carry on. But I'm glad that I can finally say I finished the Rainwell Chronicles and that I will um, be adding these to my some of my best fantasy books ever, although not the best fantasy books ever. So those were the first seven books that I finished in the month of April. Um, let me know down below how you did um, and let me know did you have you read any of those books at all what did you think about them how do you feel about the problematic nature of some of those books that i've read um i'd love to chat to you all down in the comments so if you've got this far please give me a thumbs up if you haven't already then please subscribe to the channel and i will see you all again in my next video bye